Now I'd like to show you this darling circus quilt. It's got clowns and monkeys and elephants, giraffes. I think you'll just love this little quilt and the video should really help you. Okay, to make the little critters in this quilt, we Xerox our pattern, put it on top of two pieces of fabric that are right sides together and thin polyester bonded batting. And we're going to sew on the saw line cut on the outside dash line. Now if it sews all the way around like that, after we take the paper out, we're going to just slip one layer and turn it right side out through that. If it has an opening, of course, you'll just turn through the opening like the ears. You know, they're sewn and, and have an opening. Then on the lion, we've stuffed his jowls and we're going to just sew down the middle. So I've kept the sewing, the stuffing away from the sewing. Now we've whip stitched his ears on the back, whip stitched the opening closed. Then I have fabric that I fold wrong size together and I'm going to snip it from the raw edge to the full but not all the way through like that. So I have a little rag, a mane, and then on the back I'm going to just come around and whip stitch that onto the back to make the male lion and of course the female doesn't have that. And then we're going to make the nose by taking a round piece of fabric and then you mesh hand blind stitch around the outside, stuff it and pull it and then I go back and forth on that and then the, then the little nose I'll press it onto the little character and then I'm going to let it crown around and blind stitch uh, where the fa two fabrics meet right here and then uh, seed beads for the eyes and these little guys turn out cute. Now the monkey's the same and he's got a snout that I've uh, stuffed a little more and then he's got this eye piece that's going to whip stitch to the back of the snout like that and then I'm going to blind stitch that onto the head when I blind stitch when it's stuffed again, I'm, I'm going to let it crown around. I'm not going to stitch right on the edge because it'll show. Let it crown around and, and stitch it on the inside. And then I pinch his ears together so there's an ear well. And then stitch that on the back. And then I add the seed beads for the eyes and then a couple of stitches for the nose. These little clowns, they're really fun. You're going to make your pieces just as you did before and slip the back. Um, the smaller mouth is a little harder to turn, just take your time. And then you're going to whip stitch that all on the back. And then um, the, the wider clown, he's got a, a piece like this that I'm going to whip stitch on the back. And then his hat, like this. And then I felt, I just cut a piece of felt and just blanket stitched. Well, I actually just whip stitched so it's perpendicular, looks like a blanket stitch on um, then I'm going to do his nose the same way as the other animals and then I will put seed beads and a little line for the makeup and the long clown I'm going to make these loops of hair and I'm going to whip stitch that to the back like that and then his mouth goes on and then he's got a little pointy hat. Do the same thing with the nose and the eyes and they just turn out darling. To do the giraffe and elephant block we start by foundation piecing one and two, one background and two gray and then we're going to turn it over and machine baste where the head and the ears go into the seam and that will transfer the location to this side and then we're going to um, place our pieces out the head and then the ear uh, so that it's a quarter of an inch past that basting. Then we're going to take a piece of background fabric large enough for area three, this whole area. Place it right side down along that edge, turn it over and sew this whole line. Okay, now we've added all the pieces using our color guide. The ear will slip back. The little dimensional nose is going to be <coughs> whip stitched on the back of this little guy in a, a seed, seed beads for the eyes and then the giraffe he has dimensional pieces little ears that are darted and sewn on the back and then that that 
little head goes on there. You just foundation piece the cart, and then you put the dimensional piece here that will go into the seam when these are put together. And then the wheel is just a yo-yo, so you turn under the edge a quarter of an inch, and then you make pretty big um, basting stitches so that the hole in the middle will close like that. It's a cute little wheel. And then the wheels will go on. To make the umbrella, we're going to paper piece it first. And that's pretty easy, but it has an odd angle. And I'll show you how to do that odd angle. We'll cut a piece big enough to cover that whole piece. And what we're going to do is place it like it's, like it's covering it. So right side away. Then we're going to fold it on the line that we're going to sew and it'll have a crease and then we reverse that crease like it's a wannabe seam like that and then open it up and then when we sew it it will open to a perfect way to cover this piece that hangs out. See look how odd that is. I would never have placed it like that but as soon as I sew it it will fold out and cover. Then once you get the three pieces done, you're going to stack it with backing fabric and batting. And then just sew on this lower solid line, cut on the outside dash line, take your paper out and turn it like this. And then you'll have your dimensional um, umbrella. And then this particular little umbrella block also has a lower decorative basket. And then you're going to paper piece all the way up to um, placing the umbrella so you're clear up to six. And then you're going to machine baste where the decorative basket part goes in and then the umbrella. And that will transfer those lines to this side. So then the umbrella, place the open edges a quarter of an inch above that line. And then we're going to take and um, paper piece the background corners up here like this. We're going to place it here, turn it over, sew it, trim it open like that. And then we'll show you what that looks like. And then this basket part, I've got my basting. I'm going to place my dimensional piece a quarter of an inch below that and then take a piece of background fabric, place it right side down so it's also a quarter of an inch below that line. And then I'm going to sew that whole line. And then once you get all your little pieces done, you can close up the openings, zigzag all the little pieces on. I've blushed the cheeks here on this little bear. Seed beads for the eyes. I've added a little stuffing in some of it. And then we'll just put our two little bears on there. And the top of the engine is, I'll place area number one and then I'm going to machine baste around where this little smokestack thing is. And we'll transfer it to this side. And then I've pre-made my little piece. I'll place all the raw edges a quarter of an inch outside of the that basting. And then I'll foundation piece around it. And then I need to put the little valence top part of the uh, engineering compartment right here. So I'm going to machine baste across here. That will transfer that to this side and then I've pre-made my little valence and it's going to go a quarter of an inch. I've stuffed it a little bit above that and then I'll take a piece of background fabric, place it right side down along that line, turn the whole thing over, trim the and sew that line and then trim the extra out and it will fold back and all the raw edges are encased in there. Now <clears throat> this little guy you can split the fabric here and stuff it as well. To do the lion block, I uh, foundation piece the bottom part of the carriage and then uh, machine based here along this line and place my dimensional pieces a quarter of an inch above that. I did stuff them a little bit more. Now the female lion needs a body. The male lion has this big mane that covers up. You can't even tell he's got a body. So then I've also placed the female body a quarter of an inch above. And I'm going to um, put my uh, a demen the background fabric, big whack of background fabric right side down. The bulk of the fabric's opposite where I'm covering is also above that line. Turn it over, machine base that whole thing. Trim the extra, that whole line. Trim the extra out of the seam and then it, it pops back. 
Now to make the lions, there are also these dimensional pieces. I'm going to stuff the gels that's sewn all the way around and then I slit one layer so that it could be uh, turned and then I'm going to stuff it and then whip stitch that and then just sew down the middle and then I've got the little ears where I've pinched them together to make ear wheels, wells and then whip stitch that. The nose is uh, just a circle that I um, based around the outside and stuff and then blind stitch on and then the main the dimensions are in your pattern but it's just uh, a strip that's layered of fabric um, and then you you trim it's folded here and then you're going to trim up to so it's not all the way through and then I'm going to uh, on the back of the line I'm just going to whip stitch that around, kind of make it a, a raggy kind of a mane like this. And then that's how you get the mane and then they just, they go, uh, you just blind stitch them on. Now, when I blind stitch them and they're such big bulky uh, pieces, I, I just sew on the back like that. I don't try to blind stitch here. It's kind of in its essence its own blind stitch where I just sew it from the back. It's thick, it's not going to go through and they're secure and then I don't have little lines showing here on the edges and that's a fast way and a neat way to do it and it's secure as long as you tie your knots and make sure that the stitching is secure and then they turn out darling. Okay now for the fuel car I'm going to place my area number one instead of all, all of area one is covered and then I'm going to machine base where the first little car goes in. It's up to there. Okay and that transfers it to the side. And then I've previously made my little cart and I'm going to place the raw edges so they're all quarter of an inch outside of that basting. Pin it and secure it and then I'm going to foundation piece this was one and then two, three, four, five using the color guide. Okay, And then I'm going to turn it over and machine baste where this top of the second car comes into the seam and turn it over and that will transfer the location to this side. Then I'm going to place the, the um, top of the car a quarter of an inch past that line and then put a um, foundation piece, these, this top part and the bottom part and then the raw edges will be enclosed in that and then I'll square it. It'll look like like this. This is my balloon cart, so I'm going to make a little balloon that's going to go on here and then I'll outline stitch a little string and put yo-yos for the wheels and the um, balloons are made so all the way around slit and then stuff. And I can whip stitch that shut if I want or it doesn't really show. And I'm going to fill the fuel cart with uh, balloons tack them down from behind like that and then when a balloon shows I can put the I'm going to put these balloons throughout the quilt just make them like this and when they need the little blow up part it's going to be a piece of fabric that I fold in the edges like that fold it in half and then gather it and then that's whip stitched to the back of the of the balloon it looks way cool. So that's the fuel on my little balloon cart. Okay, now we've finished the quilt. We've added these little um, ties in between. And our clowns are darling. I've added balloons to keep your eye bouncing around with the different colors. And we've got monkeys that are fun and elephants and this little pattern just turns out to be a real family heirloom and I hope you enjoy it.